Um, again, this is the chaos community call weekly, uh, April 23rd. There's no agenda today. I have a few things that I want to talk about. Um, and for those of you that would like to follow along in the minutes, here they are. Oh, somebody, I think we literally did that at the same time. So there they are posted. Um, it's kind of an update for folks. The, we did submit a Google season of docs. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but it's to help uh, projects in their documentation and try to connect projects with technical writers. So uh, we did submit this. These are along the lines of DNI projects. So I think one is trying to identify use cases where the metrics are being deployed. That would be one of the docu things to document. And then the other, Georg, do you remember what yours was? You had made a proposal as well. I was along the lines of improving what we currently have and think of a better way to represent it so that someone who comes into the project or looks at the metrics has an easier way to understand the entirety that these metrics are. Okay. Um, not sure what will happen with that, but that was just submitted yesterday. I think it's actually due today. Um, the other thing that I had was I'm trying to submit chaos as a project to community bridge so that we can kind of get that rolling. Um, I had to actually open a ticket because uh, chaos dot community is an invalid URL in their system. <laughs> Oddly enough, it has to end in dot com. So, <laughs> so, so anyway, um, that should be, I have, I think I have all the information I need, but that'll be done uh, honestly pretty soon. And the goal here, right, is I think I'm starting to understand the goal is that we can actually serve as uh, mentors for people who are interested in the project um, and financially support those mentors so that people can contribute to the project if they'd like to. Um, oh, and then I think to, I, we can also move our accounting to community bridge. So for those of you that don't know, we have about a thousand, one thousand five hundred dollars in the chaos project. And so the idea would be is to move uh, those dollars to community bridge uh, so that we can be transparent on how those dollars are spent. For example, if they're spent for an event or if they're spent to fly a student somewhere or whatever it might be, that we can be transparent on how those dollars are spent. And that, that money is, is left over from Google Summer of Code last summer is what that money is. Um, okay, so those are the two. Th oh, and then I had, um, I had something else. I, I had remembered and now it's gone. Um, okay, so also we have the, mm, any questions on either of those two things? Those are just kind of programmatic kind of housekeeping things moving forward. Um, all right, cool. The uh, metrics release. So in the document that was shared in the chat there, this is the um, spreadsheet that I would really like to use for identifying metrics to be released. I've talked to over the course of the last week, I've had a, ch a, t a chance to talk to, I think, every working group, and I think just through, <laughs> looks good to me, I don't have to develop my own spreadsheet, um, let's use this one. Yeah, you've been in every group I've been in. Yeah, so <laughs> I think. Sorry, mate. Oh, that's fine. So I think this is kind of the, the way to go. If you want to take a look at the, the spreadsheet, this will do a couple things for me. One is it'll allow. I guess it's important to do that. It'll allow the groups to identify the metrics that are relevant for release or that they believe are ready for release. You can see across the bottom, there's now tabs for evolution, risk, value, and common. Um, so you can identify these just based on red through green. Or, I don't know if that's really a, a thing, red, blue, yellow, or green. Uh, kind of what's on that on each one of your pages. So if you have questions, um, let me know. 
But this will help me tremendously when we're trying to do the release with Kevin to get it out onto the web page. And it'll have one central place to look for identified metrics. And the way that I would read this, just so you know, is that um, I think it'll change a little bit, but like on that DNI tab, I would read green as ready to go. I know it says almost ready to go, but I'm gonna read that as, if we get close to the date, uh, I will read green as, as good to go. All right. That's my, that's my proposal anyway, if you're looking at that spreadsheet. Any thoughts or comments on that? I take silences. <laughs> it looks really good. <laughs> that's how I read silence. Um, okay. Uh, I wanted to apologize to Andy. He had put it on our um, value working group agenda last week, and I had argued not to do it. So I felt bad, and I went in and added our metrics to the page. So we just have to go through and flag the one that they're there. Hey, all right, great. Georg, apology accepted. I've been so upset about this all week. <laughs> I can I can feel your pain, Andy, <laughs> through through the through the tool. Um, so as evolution meets, I think you meet tomorrow, Sean. I'll take silence as a yes. Yes, we do. My my teeth are finishing grading in the background and monitor okay. that the, cam the monitor my camera's working on is not the monitor that's showing me a picture. So I think my students used my equipment last night. If you could put that on your agenda, that would yep. be great. I'll make sure we do that. Um, Jessica and Sean, also for risk. And then Don, if you could put this on the agenda for common, which I think is in a week and a half or so. Okay, thank you. This is really great. Uh, all right, and then, oh, I did have one other thing. So um, I'll put it on the list here, ChaosCon for San Diego. Um, it's gonna be the 20th. <laughs> I say that with utter confidence. Um, It's gonna be the 20th of August. So you can put that on your agenda. We're gonna be at the conference hotel. So we're not gonna be, we'll be right on site. The question that I kind of have right now is just with respect to, my question is with respect to dollars to get this to run. So as you all know, we have $1,500 <laughs> sitting in our bank account, but that won't go too far uh, at a conference hotel. As you know, <laughs> that's like half a morning of coffee <laughs> for seven people. <laughs> uh, so we have to think of a way to either just kind of live with, with a really low cost uh, conference, which is fine, or to try to find sponsorship and I'd really, I'd, I'm kind of leaning towards sponsorship in, in my mind. Um, so if anybody has kind of thoughts on this, I, I'm all ears. Yeah, I would be inclined to push for, for getting some sponsors. So in the past, we've left this until the last minute. And I think we probably need to start soliciting for sponsors now. I sent, I sent around a, sure. um, a link to a prospectus that we use for a community organized conference here in London, DevOps States London. Um, and it's, it's much bigger of a conference, so so we don't need anything that elaborate, or you know, we're not going to have like tables and booths and things. Mm -hmm. um, but I, we do need to put together like a real prospectus, something that looks nice. It's a PDF file that we can send around to to companies. But it seems like it seems like we could use our own individual contacts and contact some of the people who work at big companies who have been active and given presentations at past chaos cons and see if they can convince their managers to do a small sponsorship. Okay. Um, why don't I, I also picked up some, the prospectus that you had sent out, Don, I got some here from the deans at the university because same thing, you know, always trying to look for corporate sponsorship on the things we're running. So I'll try to take what you gave and what I have from the deans and merge them together. So I'll put mm -hmm. that on an action item for me and I can share that 
with folks on the events um, interested in helping organize ChaosCon, but then I can also bring it to this meeting next week. Cool. Okay. And the other thing we should do is probably make sure that we have someone on the organizing team who's coordinating that particular effort. Okay. So somebody who's good at reaching out to lots of people. So somebody like, like Sarah from the Linux Foundation might be really awesome at that. Okay. That sounds um, great. But we should, yeah, we should find somebody who's really good at, really good at asking people for stuff and putting them in charge of it. Can do. Okay. Good That's idea. not me, by the way. Not me. <laughs> I'm okay at it. <laughs> I'm getting better. <laughs> I can do it, but I hate it. <laughs> Don, I, I know you've been in academia for a while. The correct term is not it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Also, not it. <laughs> She's asking somebody from the LF is, I think that's a really good idea. That's kind of a, that's just a great idea. So, all right, cool. Um, all right, any other thoughts on ChaosCon? I just like blew through four things there. One was ChaosCon, one was the community bridge, and one was something else. And then, so, oh, the metrics release and the season of docs. Anybody else have thoughts on any of these things? Can we talk just a little bit more about about ChaosCon? Yep, of course. So I think, um, sorry, I'm, I'm way behind on my email as, as usual. It's an ongoing refrain for me. But um, I think, Georg, you sent out a message asking for people to um, volunteer, right? Is that true? That is true. And okay. I have gotten zero feedback. OK. That just means we all trust you, Georg. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Several of us have volunteered offline to help out with the with ChaosCon. So I've volunteered. It sounds like that's yeah. oh, I've actually I volunteered. I volunteered as well in one of these calls recently. So Okay. So we have a you? number of people who volunteered, but I'm not sure who they are. Me. I think it's the four of us okay. that already talked about and then I put Kevin on there because he does the website. Mm, perfect. You think five's enough? Uh, no. I mean, it's it's a few more is helpful because I can volunteer. Okay. Cool. Panad, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we should specifically recruit a couple of people for things that we know we're going to need help with, um, mm -hmm. but tend to be skills that are not well represented in the group. So things like getting sponsorship requests, okay. um, marketing. So uh, again, the Linux Foundation can help us a lot with with that getting information about registration and everything out through their their channels. Yep, okay. Uh, the folks that I had to put the initial request into at the LF, you know what I mean, just to even be there, they've been very responsive and helpful and I can kind of coordinate just in terms of marketing it, marketing chaos con, mm -hmm. and kind of assisting in that regard. Yeah. Okay. Then they have but it might be good to get somebody like like Nicole Huseman, who's um, that's what she does full time as a job as marketing for open source mm -hmm. stuff. So right. getting or Sarah's same way. So if we get um, some of them involved in in this as well, I think that I think that helps. Okay. Kind of the the marketing as one step, the distribution as another step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People okay. who do marketing for a job are probably good at it. Yes, that's not that's not me. <laughs> that's not me. No, no, I, exactly. Yeah, we can all help out with that, but uh, yeah, it's a it's a real profession, and there are people who are really good at it, and that's not me. I'll yep. respond. I'll respond to leadership in that area. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Great, thank you. Uh, good. Any other thoughts, Don, or anybody else? Yes. All right. Um, I was actually, thinking that maybe we can set up a call for. I was just going to save it for the events team. For the events team, so that we can hash out a plan of what to do. Mm -hmm. And then this feeds into something else that I wanted to talk about. And this is documenting the process in our community handbook so that we can replicate it in the future and don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so I just put in the notes a weekly call. So if you're on that list on that document, I'll just try to coordinate a weekly call. Not a weekly call, but a kind of a kickoff call, I guess is what I'll call it. And then okay. if we need to re-coordinate, 
or we reconvene on a call. We can do that later. Okay. So you, you took the action item to send out a doodle or something to coordinate yeah, that? Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, so Garrett, do you want to talk about your item? Community handbook? Yes, I, I do want to. Is that, you? that reminds me I haven't actually looked at it in a while. Um, so I, I started the community handbook and when we started there was some initial positive feedback. So we have right now one page on how we can use the handbook. And I don't know if that page in and of itself is just too so scary that no one tried to add anything yet or can you share it here uh yeah in the chat and the document i can put it in the document if you put it in the chat so you can talk oh, i prefer the document as the means for sharing there you go i'll put it in the chat as well So the idea of the community handbook is to document processes that we have in uh, chaos and make them a little bit more explicit for someone who is new to the community or so that we know what's going on across the community because it's becoming so big it's hard to keep track of everything. Um, so as a way to recruit people and onboard them. That is the idea. Um, I know a few on this call have expressed interest in helping out. And my question is, how can we move this forward? Are there any suggestions or ideas? Uh, well, that yeah, Georg, I was one of the people who wanted to work on this too. Do we have is there a place some kind of like outline for this on the materials that we have? I mean, I know you said, you know, look at the gigantic one that GitLab did and I I have, but I mean, is there is there any kind of even a loose set of topics that you definitely want to make sure have covered? So I, I just put an issue in the chat, issue 105, where I brainstormed what I think would be okay. a good starting place. And I see that organizing chaos con is not on it. So I'm going to add that. Sounds right. Okay, because I find that it's easy to collaborate when we ha you have an outline that people can just say, pick a section and write towards it. Um, so yeah. now that I see this, I can probably jump on there. All right, that would be good. Should, it, should we put this outline in the readme? Um, the community handbook read me to then start flushing it out there or is the issue a good place to keep it for now? I would keep it in the issue because you're not 100% sure where you're going to put it. Like this, the outline might not be done is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the issue might be hard for people to find if they're looking to get started to help with the community handbook. So I would say if you're going to work in the issue for the outline, maybe link to the issue from the readme and just say if you're interested in working on this, here's here's where to start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, idea. that's a good idea because I clearly didn't know where the word was. So. I'll add that right now. Thank you. I think that's all I had for community handbook.
Matt, you stepped away for 10 seconds and we just, we just got lost. Yeah. We didn't what know what happened? to do. Where, it's all silent. We, <laughs> Are we you just, all working really hard or what? <laughs> <laughs> we finished the, the community thing. handbook. <laughs> <laughs> I just knocked at the door and it all fell apart. <laughs> The last thing Georg says is that's all I wanted to say about the community handbook, and then we didn't know what but to do. <laughs> People. <laughs> all right, fine. Uh, so, uh, good. apparently you made some progress on the community handbook. Yes? Georg, did you get the feedback? Yes. Before? Okay. Um, all right, so let's see. Any, um, any let's start with uh, software. Are there any... Augur, I don't think there's Grimoire Lab folks on here at the moment. Sean, do you, anything you want to kind of mention, Augur? We're uh, starting a few new prototypes, uh, focusing on having the functionality of facade uh, engaged or part of the install that you get so you can gather repo data directly that way. And also... And for those that aren't familiar with facade, could you quickly... It's a, it's a repo harvesting tool that Brian Warner, who was at Samsung when he built it, but is now at the Linux Foundation developed. And so we put a, a way to get it started in a much more lightweight manner. Um, and I've also added some robustness to it through trial and error. And Brian and I are working together on adding um, some commit information as well as uh, date and time stamps so that we can look at time of day okay. committed in it as well. This kind of unpacks the the, hum yeah. the individuals, right? Right, right. We're also building a what we're calling a, basically a, a common data model for all the different tools that we're integrating. You know, there's some software that we use to count code and calculate complexity uh, as plugins, and so <clears throat> we're constructing a data model that makes it easy for people to just for us to get at it too, for us to get at the connections between these different kinds of information that we can mine from repositories. Okay. Um, are there on this, in this regard, are there kind of efforts in tying these back to some of the working groups? Are these, are these feeding back into evolution or? We're, the ones that we're working on most actively right now are tied to value and risk. Okay. We, we do have a lot of evolution metrics and some common metrics already there. And okay. as I think they've become more well-defined we can change, you know, the specific ways that Augur calculates things. Okay. I'm just thinking it, it's always trying to like keep those two, like the software and the metrics work kind of tied together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I just, yeah, I mean, everything we're doing is driven off. Like we're not taking any, I guess I would say we're not building anything that's not being asked for by a working group or okay. members of a working group because it's, very disappointing to build software and have nobody interested in it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and to have those two things kind of drift apart a little bit. I, yeah, we don't want that. Okay. Um, do you um, how how are you how are you doing that? Is it is it via your tabs? I don't know if everybody's familiar with the Augur interface. And Sean, if you um, want to show it at all, but um, how am I doing? Like. Um, Right you? now, right now, we're do what I've just described. We're doing on the back end, okay. and the way it's going to show up in tabs, and we're we've also reworked how the tabs are going to be designed. You know, right okay. now, we originated with them being very closely aligned with the working groups, and I think yep. as, as common has has come into play, the, the working group model is less less of a uh, a way to organize things, I think, than than what it was. Okay. So, so we're thinking of new ways to organize things and really taking a strong look at the community manager use case and feedback that we've gotten from community managers about what, what they want. Some, some folks just want to consume the API. They don't want the front end at all. They, mm -hmm. just, they just like having a, a RESTful API they can refer to. Okay. Um, so when you say like new, so right now, Augur, the way that Augur is set up, is that you have those tabs across the top, which yeah. are- Yeah, I mean, I can, I can bring one up if-, if Yeah, you might just- Spend their time that way. Um, I, don't, I don't mind, I'm just- I'm always feeling, yeah, it's like- Because I know there's just a lot of development work that you're doing there. I, men I mentioned that I'm not good at marketing, right? You did. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's a good way to- uh, Sure, that's a good way to sell anything it. Anything you're about ready to show. Right. <laughs>
All right, let's see if I... Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, let me try. So I think one of the things that I, I think about often is, so the work, say, that's occurring in any of the working groups, whether it's common or evolution or risk or value or DNI, um, how that information gets represented in the tools. And like I had always, and I understand there's backend work, but there's, and I understand that some of that backend work might just be consumed via an API. Well, and I think, I think the, um, right, right. And I, I, I think it's the, the thing that I think people struggle with is, well, there's all, there's two things. One is what do these metrics mean and, and how do I make them useful in my mm -hmm. job? And the other is how do I get all that information? Cause people ask, have now, I think a lot of, questions that are natural that come from many different places. Can you just click on one of those? Okay. Yeah, so that we're, uh, this is a bad page. So, okay, this is the project overview for Twitter. So this is all of the top 10 repo repos by commits, by total commits um, and net lines changed. And the graphic goes in a couple of different directions. And if you notice, there are two Y axes that have different orientations to them. So the net lines change can be negative. Uh, the net commits will never be negative, but zero is actually below that flat line. So we're trying to show a, a contrast between number of commits and lines of code affected so that you can see um, kind of a rate of how those things are happening. And it's by project. So each of these sent, sent in T, Twitter text, Twimoji, or two Twimojis, um, probably because I collected it twice. Um, cat, these are different Twitter repositories and these are the top 10 by commits and top 10 by net lines of code um, in a year. And then these are the top new repos. In, actually, this is, these are not the top 10 new repos. These are the same repo, so. I guess I didn't so yet. across the top. I, I always want to click on things when I see them, but you have sure. GMD. Yeah. Grow which is not changed to evolution yet because changing text is hard. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, and then risk value. Right. Common right. should. So is the idea that the, cause like I kind of look at when I think of Grimoire lab, I think one of the, the things is with panels, right. That you right. can, to kind of display this information is aggregated in different forms via panels. Right, right. I kind of look at your tabs as the panel. They, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't, I mean, when I've, I think, I think Grimoire Lab gets a lot more information onto one panel. Okay. Uh, I think than, than what we're doing here. And okay. It's, uh, we're trying to allow, like, this Twimoji has no comments recently um, or it's, the data is not coming up so maybe like you can still do the so you can save it as an image you can view the source you can actually now open it in the vega editor so if you want to play with the visualization of the data you can do that which is people want to be able to play with different visualizations so we're giving them utility for that so, so maybe, uh, go ahead well okay sure like so uh, do people have thoughts on this? I have a couple. So right, we honestly in in chaos we have the software on on one hand and the metrics on another hand, right? And at some point we're trying to bring these together. And I think that with our first releases of metrics, we're, we're starting to to have some. Um, it's starting to solidify around what those metrics um, are and what they can be. So if you take a look at the DNI worksheet that was taken, uh, sent out earlier, they're, they're becoming kind of explicit or what maybe needs a little bit more work. And I would believe that the other working groups are, are gonna start doing this as well. And so I think it's important that we don't like have software running independently from that metrics work, that these two things, people could tell me I'm crazy, but these two things could need to stay at least somewhat together. <laughs> yeah. You know, they need to have some sort of lockstep. And so I guess the question maybe like for Augur or for Grimoire Lab is, 
is this something that you would hope that people in the metrics in the different working groups would come to Augur? I mean, to implement proposed metrics in Augur or Augur Lab, or um, is it that it's your responsibility in Grimoire Lab or Augur to observe what's occurring in the metrics, or is it some combination of both? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we've sp I've sp we've, the team has spent a lot of energy this spring making the new newcomer experience easier. Okay. Uh, and and that's one one of the reasons we're creating a consolidated data model and and dividing the collection work into what we're calling workers, um, which is just a queuing a queuing system to just continuously collect information from different sources and and make it clear what the provenance is that that helps people just add more data i, I think we've also got I've, I've recently updated the instructions it's not published yet but i put uh, a bunch of folks through testing to just try to use it and so i have some pretty clear okay you want to build a new metric instructions now okay that um I think it's easy. I think the, the newcomer barriers are getting lower for Augur than, than they, they once were. I know I've had a half a dozen folks between March and today uh, install it and run it and be able to do that without having to contact us or create an issue. So for a okay. prototyping system like how we think of ourselves, that's a huge win. But I would love, we would love for, I mean, we're like any open source community. We would love for people to contribute. Sure. <laughs> um, and try to use it, right? We're, we're like that. So maybe the, at this point, maybe the, the call is to folks on the software side and folks on the, on the working group sides to just kind of um, think about this issue and maybe bring it up in your working group calls about how these, how metrics and software can be, can be stitched together, how we can think about just making sure that the thoughts that are going on on one side are occurring on the other side. That's all. Again, maybe I'm crazy, but <laughs> I would love to see the work that say is, is coming out of value, right? Be represented in Augur or Grimoire Lab. Like it would be great if like one day on a Friday, you're like, these are the metrics, these are the goals, questions, metrics that we want to move forward with and poof on Saturday, they're in Augur. I know that's not going to happen, but like that would be like, that would be a huge win for me. Yeah, I mean, adding new projects or, or new lists of repos now is, uh, I mean, we can, we've added large numbers of repositories just by knowing the GitHub organizations um, mm -hmm. very quickly. Uh, calculating the initial statistics takes time. Sure. And that's partly that's because we, we store it relationally so that it, it's easy to put on a page and then have people ask different questions. But Okay. Um, yeah. Do people have thoughts on this? Just kind of curious. I have I have thoughts. Um, just speaking from the perspective of the value group. Yeah. Um, uh, I really like what I see here with Augur, um, and uh, I like the fact that there's a, a back end that we can pull data from, and a, and a front end for rapid prototyping. Uh, so in the value group, I would like to have an instance working uh, to display our metrics data ASAP. Yeah, I, can, I, oh. I have that to do. I'm sorry I missed the call last week, but it gives me another week to get that done. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a crazy academic time of year, but uh, <laughs> we, have a lot of, we have a lot of things cooking on Augur right now, so, and a lot of things coming together, and it's, I'll ha have it's that. It's fine, and by the way, I think, I think the velocity is really excellent, you know. Uh, we just have come together and sort of we're able to form a quick consensus and the tools are excellent. So in, in my view, it's, it's really going rapid and nice. Um, for value, we could, we could have a, a standalone instance of Augur or we could use a shared instance that is shared by other groups, a, a common instance. Uh, either would be acceptable of the two. I'd prefer the former because I'd like to be able to you know, sort of get hands on and be able to tweak, but but right. whatever is easiest and and best uh, for the group as a whole is is great. I think it's I think it's always not a good idea to have four people trying different things with your engine at the same time. Mm -hmm. okay. so, <laughs> I so mean, you know, like, let's right. try the nitrous and the high octane gas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I can get to the gas and you can get to the carburetor. Carburetors, <laughs> I remember that, hating myself. So it sounds like standalone is the way to go. And I mean, it's, it's gonna be easier to experiment with what you care about, right? Right, yeah, and, and the interesting thing for value is um, we have this concept which, which comes from Sean uh, of a parameterized metric. And that is a, a metric that you can combine with some, some parameters to get a, a kind of a derivative uh, metric. And we're interested, for example, in labor costs. And a labor cost might be a function of, you know, number of issues closed times uh, a cost per issue. And the cost per issue would be the parameter. Uh, initially, we're going to just export JSON data to Excel spreadsheets and let people, you know, apply the parameters in their own spreadsheets. Uh, but over time, uh, I think we'll be talking about, oh, you know, is there a generic way to, to do a parameterized uh, interface to make it a little bit easier to prototype. So I'm, um, a, I'm a huge fan of what I see and I can't wait to get started with it. Yeah, the, I've, I've, we actually spent a lot, I spent a good part of Saturday uh, building documentation for how to just, I want a new metric here. What do I need to know? And I haven't released it to the public yet because I'm still testing it on lab rats. I mean, college students, but um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's, uh, it's easier than it was to understand. Even I can do it. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. um, so Don, I saw Andy put himself on mute, so I'm guessing you're done. I'll take that as a signal, it's done talking. Um, I'm done. <laughs> Don, does any of this resonate with Common at all? Um, yeah, I mean, a little bit. It's, I don't know, we're still, we're still kind of early days in Common. Okay. Do you want to, do you want an update on the Common Working Group? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we did decide to create a separate repo for the common working group, um, which we did. So Georg created that repo and I um, the readme and the contributing file to that so that we'd have it. And I think Georg, you said you implemented the DCO bot on that repo too, right? Yes, I believe okay. the DCO bot is now active on all the chaos repositories. Perfect. Um, yeah, I noticed this because my pull request to add the README and the contributing didn't have a signed off by, and it didn't tell me, uh, it didn't complain at me. So, so Georg added it. Um, so we're, we're all set there. So then, so we're going to work in that, um, in that repository instead of in the, um, in the regular. Okay, thank you. I was just copying and pasting. Um, so it's in the notes, so you can see it. And that's the repo that we're going to work in instead of the metrics repository. Just because, you know, as we started looking at things like focus areas, it seemed like we were um, likely to confuse people by putting that in the main metrics repo and not having our own repo. Um, we also talked about focus areas. So we talked about um, kind of three focus areas for the release. One is organizational affiliation. Another one is geography. And the third one is responsiveness. So we know we need to do a spreadsheet like what D and I had, but to be honest, we're not sure exactly. We haven't figured out yet what the metrics are within each of those focus areas. So we need to do that before we can put them in a spreadsheet and then figure out which ones to focus on. Okay. So that's on the agenda for next week. Okay. Great. Um, yeah, that was most of, most of what we talked about in the common metrics working group. Okay. Any questions on that? No, it sounds like it's more still kind of about coalescing before thinking about actually prototyping something is what I'm hearing. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're just trying to figure out what the, the structure and the focus. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, all right, any other software slash group updates folks that they want to talk about okay. did we do the dni update did i miss uh, that no there's been no dni update at the moment i missed the meeting because i was it was a bank holiday here in the uk so the during the dni call let me put up the meeting and then i can
be well informed. <laughs> um, we just continued on the action items we've been working on. The race hopper event, we decided to pursue that. Um, most of the time we spent on the sponsorship metric. And this is not sponsorship in terms of money, but as a contrast to mentorship. And we're not quite happy with how it reads right now or how it explains what sponsorship actually is. So we will have to revise that. So advancing the metrics that we have and continuing the work and spreading the news about the work that we do. Okay. On the Grace Hopper participation, that's in October. And from, from what I understand, it's a day or a half a day workshop event where Grace Hopper attendees would participate in hands-on work with different projects. And that can be with technologies and actually contributing back to the, tech to the technologies. So I had submitted a proposal for Grace Hopper and they've been really supportive and very communicative during this whole process. And I'll know more. I think we have to have, um, we'll know more May 3rd, early May. And then with respect to Augur and Grimoire Lab, which both Daniel and Sean had provided some insights as to how their tooling could um, be part of this workshop. Uh, I put those proposals forward from Sean, you, and from Daniel. Uh, so kind of, I guess the long and short of it is more to come on that, but it's, it's moving forward. That's good. Cool. That's, nice. yep. That's a really great event. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. One update that I'm super excited about is the potential to be on the new stack. We are contributing an article about the history and where the DNI working group is now. And then we'll probably be invited to speak for 20 minutes on the podcast about the DNI working group and the upcoming events and things that we do. Okay. Okay. Um, what else for folks? I'm just looking at the minutes. All right. Uh, if I'll take silence as nothing, nothing else here. See, I can take silence a variety of different ways. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, no. interest. Uh, I've been on this call a while and I feel like I learned a lot and now I'm hungry. <laughs> However I want to take it. So uh, great. This is, this is great. I really appreciate the, the input and thoughts from everybody. And I know that there's a GMB call tomorrow and Common is not meeting this week and Value is meeting on Friday. Of this week right. right correct i have the same understanding so that's my understanding i'll keep so, oh, that's a way good. i think i've got it all straight at this point so all right cool thanks everybody all right thank you all right take care bye, bye. Okay.